Hi everyone, I'm just going to give you a brief overview of your Leaving Cert Biology paper for 2021 and the changes that are going to be on the paper and how you can prepare for the exam in the coming weeks. So the layout of the exam for this year is slightly different owing to the fact that we have missed a couple of months of school over the past two years, but there are still going to be three sections on the paper. So section A is still going to be the short answer questions. The only difference is there is now going to be seven questions and you're only required to answer four. And each one of those questions is going to carry 20 marks. So in total, this is about 28% of your overall grade. Section B is still the experiments. They're going to be worth about 10% of your overall grade. There's still going to be three questions and I'll talk about the changes amongst that in a couple of minutes. And you're only going to be required to answer one of those questions. And each question is going to carry 30 marks. Section C, it's still your long answer questions. This is going to be about 62% of your overall grade. And there's now going to be seven questions rather than the usual six, but you're only required to answer three of those questions. And each of those questions is going to carry 60 marks. So as always, the last two questions are going to have internal choice as well. So this used to be parts A, B and C, but you haven't answered two of those parts if you chose to do that question. But there's now also going to be a part D, but you still only have to answer two of the parts if you were to choose one of those questions. So it's interesting just to look at the core structure. So as we know, the Leaving Cert Biology course is broken down into three units. We have Unit 1, we have Unit 2, and we have Unit 3. Now, on a quick glance here, we can see that Unit 1 is by far the shortest one. We have the scientific method, we have food, and we have ecology. Now, I'm not going to read through everything that's in Unit 2 and Unit 3, but it's important just to realise how much shorter Unit 1 is compared to Unit 2 and Unit 3. And this is actually really important for us, because if we were to look at the course structure and compare that to the exam layout, Generally, up until this year, in the short answer questions, there would always be two questions from Unit 1, two questions from Unit 2, and two questions from Unit 3. The experiments would vary slightly, and then for the long questions, there would be one question from Unit 1, two questions from Unit 2, and three questions from Unit 3. Now, that might change slightly this year owing to the changes on the paper. But the importance of the table above is the fact that Unit 1 comprises of just three topics. We have the scientific method, we have ecology, and we have food. Now, given the fact that there's going to be two short questions and one long question asked about this, I would highly recommend knowing these in detail. It's the shortest of all the units, but it accounts for 34% of the exam, and that's huge. Okay? Now, if we were to take the experiments into account here as well, there's 22 experiments on the course, and if you were to combine those 22 experiments with knowing unit one inside out and upside down, there's 45% of the exam covered. So this might change slightly this year with the additional questions, but I would highly, highly recommend knowing Unit 1 really, really well and all 22 experiments. Now for your short answer questions, a couple of things just to keep in mind. I would generally allocate about 30 minutes of the three hours that you have for the exam for this. You are only required to answer four out of the seven questions, but if you can answer more, even better if you can answer all of the questions because you're going to be marked on all of them and you'll be given the marks for your best four really important for the short answer questions is you must know your definitions so make sure you have your list of definitions and you're sitting down and learning those off and for your answers at the end of the day they're short answer questions so get straight to the point with each one of your answers a good tip as well is to read through all the questions first and put a question mark or an x beside the questions you're unsure of and come back to those at the end of the exam there's no point wasting time there and then leave it and come back if you've time at the end and if you've absolutely no idea just give a guess. If you leave it blank, you're guaranteed to get zero marks, but if you give a guess, there's a chance you might get some marks. And the biggest thing that's important for the short answer questions is to practice, practice, practice. You will notice as you're going through exam questions that the questions can be very, very repetitive. So going over those questions constantly, checking the exam questions, checking the marking schemes, you'll be absolutely fine for your short answer questions. Now for your experiments, we know there's going to be three questions here, but you only have to answer one of them. But this question alone is going to be about 10% of your final grade. Now you should have time to answer more. So if you do, do so, and your best question will be awarded. Now there's 22 experiments in total. I would recommend knowing all of them in detail if you can, but if you are struggling with the content, there is a couple of new changes, which I'll go through in a couple of minutes. So I know 22 does sound like a lot, but a lot of them are quite similar to each other as well. So for example, there's a couple of ecology experiments there that are very similar and the enzyme experiments are very similar as well. So that total number you could kind of bring down slightly. 
And just looking at past papers, and we look at this in the minute, the scientific method, pre preparing slides for animal and plant cells, the isolation of DNA, the germination experiments, and the enzyme experiments, they seem to be the ones that come up more often than others. So this table here will give you a brief idea of the experiments that have come up since 2013. So if we were to have a look exactly what I just said there a couple of minutes ago, we can see there that the scientific method is one of the more popular ones. It's come up every year from 2013 up to 2018. We have the animal and plant cell experiments there. They've come up pretty much every other year between 2013 and 2019 and wasn't on the paper last year. So it could be a good shout for this year. And as we move further down, you can see there that the isolation of DNA, it's come up three times since 2015. And then down towards the bottom, the food tests there as well. They're quite a common one. For 2021, they actually have given us a little bit of guidance for the experiment question. So before this, it was pretty much blind we'd be going into the exam. We wouldn't, we wouldn't know which experiment was going to come up in each question, but they've broken it down for us. So we've been told going into the exam this year that question eight, the experiment that's going to come up there is either going to be the food tests, it's going to be your ecology study, so your habitat study, it's going to be preparing and examining the animal or plant cell, or it's going to be the isolation of DNA from the plant tissue. So one of those is going to come up in question eight. For question nine, we have the production of alcohol by yeast. We have the influence of light intensity on carbon dioxide or carbon dioxide on the rate of photosynthesis. We have the enzyme immobilization. We have the effect of pH or temperature on the rate of um, amylase, pepsin or catalase activity. We have the effect of heat denaturation on the rate of catalase activity. And we have an activity to demonstrate osmosis. So a little bit more involved with those ones, but we know one of those is definitely going to come up in question nine. And question 10, a little bit longer again, it's the growth of leaf yeast using agar plates, preparing and examining microscopically the transverse section of a dicot stem. We have the dissection, we have the effect of exercise on the breeding rate or pulse rate, the effect of IAA growth regulator on plant tissue, the use or use starch agar or skim milk plates to show digestive activity during germination, and then the effect of water, oxygen and temperature on germination. So again, that one's a little bit, um, a little bit longer. So what I would advise with this is, if you're really struggling with content at this point, because we are getting quite close to the exam and the course is quite big. So if you're struggling with content and you know that a couple of those experiments in question 10 are a little bit tricky for you and you're not fully sure of them, just focus on the ones in question eight and question nine. Okay, question eight is a little bit shorter. Again, coming back to what I was saying earlier on, unit one was the shortest, but scientific method, ecology and food accounts for a massive amount of the exam. So we can see already that that's pretty much the entire of question eight there. So knowing ecology, knowing food, and knowing the scientific method is really gonna to stand to you throughout the entire exam. So at this point, decide which experiments you're going to focus on and stick with that. So then for section C, which is the long answer questions, probably about 100 to 120 minutes here. Um, this is gonna be the bulk of your time because it's definitely worth the most marks. It's about 68% of the exam read through each question very carefully to help you decide which ones you're going to answer. You have to answer three questions, but if you have time, answer extra questions. Um, make sure you include enough points for full marks. So everything is obviously marked in threes for Leaving Cert Biology. So if a question is there and you know it's gonna be worth six marks, you need to have two points. So make sure you're writing enough points down for each question. Some of the most popular questions that come up would be genetics, photosynthesis, respiration, and ecology. So I definitely would be focusing on those because they come up pretty much every year. And at this point, your best friend is going to be exam papers. So you need to practice, practice, practice those exam papers, practice an exam paper, have the marking scheme open, check your answers and see if you have what they're looking for. And do that over and over and over again, because you will start to notice the questions are very repetitive. And a lot of the time, it's pretty much the same thing that comes up, just asked in a slightly different way. And if you go onto the exam revision website, there's loads of exam questions there. There's loads of mock questions there as well, which you can practice and then check your marking schemes for. So some general tips for the exam before you go in. Biggest one is relax. All questions on the exam are going to be based on something you've covered in class. You're not going to be asked something you haven't seen before. It's just going to be phrased slightly different. Okay, so there's nothing going to be on that exam that you haven't seen in some shape or form before. So relax and try and apply your knowledge to the question. Read the question carefully. So is the question asking you to state or list something or is it asking you to explain something? Because the difference in the question word can dictate how much you're expected to write. So if we have a look over here in the top right hand corner, that word there, explain, immediately I know my answer is gonna be a little bit more detailed than giving two causes. I could probably get away with one or two word answers here for the second one, 
but that word explained there means I have to put a little bit more detail into my answer. Definitely use diagrams if you can. As the saying goes, a picture paints a thousand words, and this can really help you with your explanations and answers as well. So I might need to ask you for a diagram, but if you know one that's gonna help you explain your point, get that diagram down into paper and make sure it's labeled. So for timing, if you get stuck on a question, just move on. So the time you spend agonizing over one question you can't do will take time away from answering the questions you can do that might be further on in the paper. So just skip it, come back, and if in doubt, give a guess. And then, as I said earlier on, I've said it a few times, at this point, exam papers should be your main focus. So practice them over and over and over again and use the marking schemes to grade them. So they are obviously available on examinations.ie, but if you go onto the exam revision website, the exam papers will be there, but there'll also be mock questions there as well, which are really useful as well for getting the extra practice in. So just in general, best to look with your study over the next couple of weeks. You've put in huge amounts of work over the last two years, and I can guarantee you all the work that you've put in will pay off. Just keep those tips in mind, keep practicing your exam questions, and you'll be absolutely fine.